Hi. It occurred to me upon completely recording the following coaching session uh, for the podcast that I had omitted a critical tool in uh, the path of acceptance. And it was so critical that I am uh, placing this little addendum to the coaching session at the beginning of, uh, of everything, of the conversation that you're about to hear. And kind of a, a hack or a way of thinking about acceptance is anything that you do not have control over is up for easier acceptance and awareness. And the reason for that is, is that we can only, I mean, like, realistically, what can you control? Right? I know I'm pausing, possibly awkwardly for some of you, like, what is she doing? Why is she being so quiet? But we can only control our actions and our reactions. That's it. That is it. That's it. And when we expect of others, when we sit around in that deafening volume of hope, like I used to have such a hang up with hope and it was it was more that I had not healed my codependent behaviors. That I was so caught up in that desire and need to control other people's reactions and actions. Because I wanted their actions and reactions to evidence that I was valuable. When in reality, over and over and over, they were fucking telling me I wasn't very valuable. That's a really hard thing for a child to feel from an adult parent. That's a really hard thing to feel from your spouse, from somebody um, who you're dating, somebody who's your best friend. It is really hard to have your boundaries run over, trampled into the ground. We have expectations just automatically by the fact that we were born around how certain people are going to treat us. But the reality of it is we only attract people who are, well, as good as our boundaries, as good as our self-love, as good as our self-worth. And if we're relying on traumatized parents or parents who are abusive, parents who are emotionally distant or unstable or alcoholic or drug addicts, then we are not going to be bringing healthy people into our lives or around us. And so as we move forward and down this road in the following conversation, please look at it through the lens of like when you do the visualizations, you do those exercises and you, you do that work for you, that you show up for you, do it through the lens of can I control this action or reaction? Whose is it? And if it isn't mine, why is it bothering me so much? And if it's bothering me so much, do they care or not care? Because if you're, like I was, addicted to narcissists, they are not going to care about your hurt. In fact, they're going to use it as fuel for their own livelihood. It's really, really critically important that you get comfortable with the idea that you can only control your actions and reactions. And anything outside of that, well, you need to see if you're in the right spot or not. And as hurtful and as hard as it is, it's likely that you're in this space right here and now because you're not in the right space in a lot of other places in your life. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to leave that space, right? There are family members and reasons that we can't just block everybody out of our life always and walk away. But it doesn't mean that you have to be disconnected from yourself. You can boundary up and not let those people in and not be a servant 
to their erratic emotional needs because that is not your problem. Okay, so that's my addendum to the following coaching session. And I think you guys are freaking amazing. Sorry for dropping an F-bomb in there. I was a little passionate about it. And if you hear some background noise, I am on a very lovely family vacation with uh, all of my kids and extended uh, kid best friends and uh, girlfriends that are along on this family vacation in the mountain range of Northern California, USA. And it is absolutely stunning here. And uh, so you might hear some, some ambient noise in the first part. And the second part was actually recorded earlier uh, in my own home. So it's likely you might hear a cat or a dog. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's just the way life is sometimes. Sometimes we have a great message to get out, but it's imperfect. And uh, later down the road, we'll talk about perfection, but not tonight. Have a fabulous coaching session that's going to follow. Remember, you can only control what? You can only control you and your actions and your reactions. No, that doesn't mean you can tr control your kids. You can do your best, but you can't control them either. Stay tuned through this quick break. And on the other side is the uh, bulk of today's coaching session. Thanks. Hey, gorgeous soul. This is Nita. Welcome to Infinity Within. I am so proud of you for showing up for today's coaching session. Investing in you in huge ways, small ways, uh, affirmation ways, big ways, <laughs> any way that you can pour into your self-care, self-love bucket is well worth your time and energy and investment. And showing up today is an investment in that bucket just for you. And I'm proud of you. Thank you for coming. My name is Nita Kruger and I am a possibility coach. I have started Infinity Nation because I know that we are all infinite with possibility within the depths of our soul. And the path to unleashing all of the possibility of the dreams of, that you have is through all those parts of you that you avoid. When you stand up to the parts of you that you fear the most and you do the work and you heal those parts of you, you will grow immeasurably things that you can't even imagine will begin to open up and align for you all because you choose to show up and listen to your inner voice and begin to align your life and your actions to the life that your intuition that your soul your body energy your mind spirit energy is telling you is the life for you and today Today, we're going to continue on our conversation from last week. We're going to build on last week's conversation, which was building the awareness within, truly working on becoming aware of the person that we are and the life that we live and the footprint that we have and the reality of the things that have happened to us or the things that we want to have happen to us, with us, for us. Today, I'm really excited about today because today is going to take it to that next step. If we have even just the tiniest amount of self-awareness, the next thing that we really want to kind of start budding like an early rose is acceptance because we cannot move forward in any part of our life if we are just sitting in a mucky, muddy puddle of rainy water in our soul, fighting the reality of whatever our hurt and our pain is, or our joy, right? If we are silencing what our body is telling us, we are going to be out of alignment. And so today, when we work on acceptance, acceptance of 
the life that we have, acceptance of the traumas that have happened to us, acceptance of the egregious evils, unspeakable things that you maybe have never told another soul. This isn't about rolling down the car window and shouting out the window, all those horrible things. It is about being able to sit with yourself And begin to build a relationship with yourself that these things have happened. That maybe somebody who is supposed to treat us nice treats us really, really horribly. Maybe that somebody takes advantage of us. Maybe it's that uh, we had an abusive childhood. Maybe it's that we have a spouse who cheats and we're silent. We just sit in that and we allow that to happen. Maybe it's that uh, we were in a accident that we had no hand in and yet it completely changed the course of our life. There's a lot of anger and grief when our path and our plans are interrupted or thwarted and now we have a short-term, long-term, or permanent injury, or even possibly disability, or if you were abused or sexually traumatized, um, you know, those kind of injuries in themselves, while the effects may not be a physical, that where other people could see them or where you talk about them, the mental emotional effects of that are going to go with you full lifetime until you deal with them. You can try your best to escape them, but quite honestly, you are not going to be able to escape the need to feel and grieve and sit with that ugly occurrence that is haunting and hurting your soul. On the flip side of that, if there's something incredibly that makes you so joyful but you don't have the right people around you and you can't share your joy because you're worried that they'll be mad, angry, they'll be judgmental, they'll be jealous. Those aren't the right people to be around you. We can't silence our joy any more than we can. We, sh- we should not be put in a position where we're silencing the reality of when we're hurting. However, many people are born into households where they must silence parts silence parts of themselves in order to just freaking stay safe now i can i can honestly uh, just about every person that's in my life right now uh, has had to at some point throughout their childhood and uh, into adulthood has self-abandoned in order to stay safe. I'm 54 years old. I know I've known and know a lot of people. And I'm going to tell you right now, nobody is trauma free. So when we stand in the um, self-shaming aisle of our life and we live small and we don't step into our light and our passion and our purpose and we don't heal our traumas and we don't accept the reality of the hand that we're dealt, we're really responsible for judging ourselves and putting ourselves on a small path more than anybody else because we have every right. We have the, a duty to ourselves just by the fact that we were born to turn towards what our light and our purpose for living our life is. And anybody who tries to stand in our way, what you need to envision is that they just have their own bag of rotten tomatoes. And they're just trying to take those rotten tomatoes and they are trying to throw them at you or put them in your vat of tomato soup you're making. Sorry if you don't like tomatoes. It's the analogy that came to mind because it is a fall, wintry, kind of stormy after noon, early evening here. Anyhow, now I want soup. (laughs) 
My point is, is that nobody can rob us of our path unless we give them that power. And when we build an awareness of our hurts and our pains and our unspoken joys and our unrelinked, um, unrelinked, how do you say that? I'm going to, I'm going to, unrealized dreams and passions and priorities when we're living in the shadow of a lie for whatever reason we are so far from being our authentic self and so far from realizing the purpose and joy of the life that we were gifted In order to accept, we have to start getting really real about those things. Now, again, we're not going to yell them out, but you can write them down. You can just kind of catalog them. And in a moment, we'll do a quick exercise to help you kind of decide, uh, you know, maybe you're going, oh my God, I have like 300 hurtful things. And I have no idea where I would even start. We're going to, I'm going to get to a spot where I help you dial down What's the closest one to you? When we accept our traumas, when we accept our unspoken joys, we start to chip away at whatever those invisible cords are that are keeping us silent. Those things that are keeping us from living that authentic life that we dream of. And just kind of bring to your forefront, if you listen to the um, show, the podcast about uh, building self-awareness, think of that moment of what is, what was my childhood vision? What was my childhood dream? What's the dream closest to me? What do I really want to be doing? And now if you were to um, use like, let's say a football field or a soccer field and how big those are. Just kind of imagine that you right now are at one end of that field. How many fields would line up? Like, how does it feel? How long, how far away from the person that you want or desired or hope to be? How, how far away does that feel? Because today with acceptance, we want to move a bit closer on that field. We want to shorten that distance and accepting doesn't mean that you forgive or forget or you don't have those hurts and pains it just means that it's going to take you one step closer to doing the work to heal them to confront them to no longer be owned by them it has taken me oh two and a half good hard years of dedicated self-work to break free of a narcissistic hold that has been on me most of my, my, most of my life. Let's just start there. Most of my life. And that didn't happen immediately. It happened with a, a slap in the face awareness of how this life I was living this life I was surviving, of how it was affecting my kids. And when I heard that, love was defined through the eyes of a nine-year-old child as mean. Daddy loves you. He just shows it by being mean. I wanted to throw up, right? And I'm certain that you have a moment in your life where you defined awareness of this is not the life I'm supposed to be living. That is an okay thing. That is a good thing. That is a healthy thing. Because if you, if you are aware that the life track, the life path you're on, isn't matching your soul's vision for you, your intuitive vision for you, you have time to move the dial, to close the gap and start working towards where you want to be. Well, when I suddenly had awareness, I didn't know what to do. I felt utterly lost. 
utterly lost. The awareness just was like a tidal wave washing down on me. Now, what do I do now? And due to life altering injuries in my home, it was, um, now I probably had about a good six months to accept the reality, the magnitude of what was washing over me. And I, I didn't have an immediate solution. All the solutions were just too, too, too Everest. They were mountains that I could not even imagine climbing. But the, here's the interesting thing. Uh, but it took me, it took me a long time to get there. And it took me confiding in somebody who had shared a similar journey and a similar story is that we don't have to, you know, look at the top of the mountain. We don't have to look at the end game. We just have to look at the next breath, the next moment, the next step and to be willing, accepting of taking that next step. So when you look at that goal that intuitive soul vision that you you know is where you should be and you're way 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 back here a mile away in my case it was probably 20 miles away on the soccer field and you're looking way 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 down there at that idea of who you're supposed to be that's your awareness your acceptance is that you do have the courage within you to create, find, build, learn techniques, tools, and ways and a path to cope with whatever all of those hurts, all those traumas, all those hidden joys, all of those things that you can't say out loud. There is a path to that soulful you. And acceptance, acceptance is just allowing it to settle over you that I do want better. I do want to heal from these things. I do want a different life. Acceptance is also like when you get further, if you are, or when you get further down the road, acceptance of those traumas is God it's just the most powerful and beautiful thing in healing in your healing journey when you can accept the wrongs that somebody did to you and you can literally say that no longer owns me it is the most freeing thing that you can do I'm not gonna lie to you it isn't easy it is not easy to get there and to go this person is still in my life for whatever reason uh, they were still somebody who has access to me. Typically, typically that would be like a family member um, that you cannot cut off. And they still have boundaried or some except like some what I set as the rules, except um, access to me. But here's the thing. Those interactions no longer own me. They no longer destroy me. They no longer hurt me. I'm indifferent to their hooks. I'm indifferent to their gaslighting. I'm indifferent to them. As, as, as ideological as we all want it to be to just say, like, we're going to cut everybody out of our life. Oh, we don't need those person and this person and this person in our life. It's not always attainable or feasible. And that's why learning boundaries is so important. And uh, we will do a whole episode on boundaries a little bit further down the road. But right now, we just need to accept that there are things in your life that were within or out of your control that have taken you away from the person that you want to be. Because acceptance, acceptance of how far we are away from the person that we want to be is going to allow you to begin plotting out, how do I get to where I want to be? It doesn't remove 
the reality codependent me couldn't accept. I, I played this hybrid of healing and hurting. And I stayed in that, locked in that, uh, with PTSD and um, just codependent disorders. Just flying through that, trying to survive. My nervous system automatically locked. When you have that kind of vision, here you are at maybe the 20-yard line on the football field, and there you are, eight football fields down is where you kind of see yourself. And you can almost like picture all these like things on the football field that are, you know, going to be the obstacles you have to hurdle or get through. I kind of envision those things as like if I do the work, and I do the work, and I do the work, and I show up for me, and I show up for me, and I actually do whatever my therapist or my coach or my teacher, uh, not educational high school teacher or you know school teacher, but my um, hired teacher to um, would be like a coach, but maybe under a specific course, coursework teacher. That's what I'm trying to say. Whatever that person is trying to teach me, if I actually do the work, I'm going to move forward. It might be an inch. It might be 20 yards, but I'm going to move forward. As long as I accept that I have work to do, I'm not going to be arrogant. I'm not going to be um, self-hating or say that my therapist is so stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. We can do a whole different episode on picking the right therapist for you. And your intuition will tell you if you're not with the right healer or coach or therapist or teacher. Listen to your intuition. Typically, though, if you're doing work with a, a guide, a therapist or a coach or a guide that you trust, you're going to know that you're rowing in the right direction. And so trust normalize what it feels like to trust you. It's really imperative that every step forward that you recognize that. So we're standing, we're going to do a little visualization here. So get yourself into a comfortable spot or, uh, you know, just pause for a moment. You can close your eyes or leave your eyes open, but really give yourself over to this vision technique that we're going to use. Envision yourself um, standing on the football field. All the way at the other end of that football or soccer field is the you that you want to be, that you envision to be like the dream life that you just haven't been able to get to for whatever reason, right? Right? And in between that are all the storms raging. So uh, if I were naming my storms, childhood sexual abuse, childhood narcissistic abuse, adult narcissistic abuse, multiple times over, um, psychological abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, digital abuse. And then we're, if we look at injuries, concussion, and uh, you know, on and on and on, right? So there's just some massive traumas. There's hurtful people. There's faces. There's ghosts from the past just all pulling and yanking on my emotional lack of self-worth. With your eyes closed, just breathe with me for a moment. And then when I ask you to I'm going to do a three, two, one, and you're going to allow the biggest, most oh, clunky one of those thoughts, those thoughts that you want to accept, those realities, those thoughts that are on the football field, those realities, you're going to, you're going to just say it, whether you say it inside or outside, but you're going to say whatever it is, and that's just going to help us determine 
what it is that's standing in your way right now. So three, two, one. Which of those things popped to the front of your mind? For those of you that are unsure, we're just going to count down one more time. Three, two, one. And maybe it's three or four things that pop to your mind, probably because they're really linked together. That's okay. Whatever popped to your mind, it's okay. Kind of look at that thing in your mind's eye, whether it's on that football field or if you're sitting outside, just imagine that memory, that hurtful person, place, or thing, or illness or injury. Imagine it as though it were something right there. And see if you can. Well, not everybody will be able to do this, but just see if I accept that you've hurt me. And I accept that I want to move past that hurt. And I'm going to do the work that I have to do to move forward past the hurt that you have caused. I accept that you've changed the course of my life. And I don't like it. I hate it. I loathe it. I'm mad at it. I'm mad at you. But I accept that I have the power to change my story. I accept that you do not control me. You do not control my path forward. I accept that I am strong enough to reach out for help. I accept that I will no longer pretend that my feelings are invalid. My hurt is real, and I accept that. Allow yourself to just sit and breathe. Breathe through and bring all of that thought processing, those emotions that you're feeling, just bring them just back into a space that is within kind of the arm's reach of your body. Keep breathing. If you're feeling some anxiety, some panic, try a grounding technique, you know, maybe take your shoes off, touch the, literally put your, your bare feet onto a real surface, a natural surface, uh, bark, grass, outdoor things are really nice, or rock or tile, carpeting, take your fingers, get a piece of ice, Get a hot cup of liquid. Sip that. Things that bring you and connect you back to reality if you're feeling a bit um, heightened in anxiety. Can you hear some sounds around you in the real world? Can you smell anything? Can you taste anything? The more work that you do Allow yourself to embrace doing. The more time that you invest in doing that work, the more that you will, over time and dedicated work, see a reduction in anxiety, panic, and even PTSD. I don't say that lightly. I say that because I have done that work and I have had a massive life turnaround. 
It is possible. But you have to accept that you have work to do. You have to accept that those things that were done to you, if you were ever caused to abandon your feelings, if you were caused to be silent when you wanted to scream or to be silent when you wanted to be joyous, if you were ever gas lit, uh, if you were abused in any way, shape, or form, if you were in an accident uh, or your, your path forward was robbed of you, you were egregiously done wrong, moving up that football field, up that soccer field, towards the step of acceptance that you actually do have the right to be the person way, way down that field with all of their hopes and dreams in process. That's going to allow you to start moving forward and doing the work. It's going to allow you to realize that nobody, your parents, your siblings, your best friend, your spouse, nobody has the right to take away from your life, to abuse you, to completely derail you, to the atrocities that happen in households is utterly disturbing and disgusting. And there is not much that somebody's going to tell me that I'm going to be shocked by these days. And, and uh, largely that is based off of the own things, the things that I've hidden in my own life. I get it. Really horrible things happen. People who are supposed to love us were born into families. We don't get to choose families without broken bits and parts of them. And yet, in order for us to be whole, we have to say that I accept that my parent or my spouse or, 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 or my friend or my boss or my coworker, I accept that they are just not capable of understanding me and my needs. That does not make me and my needs wrong. Accepting it just gives you the ability to step forward and explore it with a guided therapist or coach or trauma worker or teacher. It's kind of like giving yourself a green light to say, like, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't what I had planned. And I need some help. I need some help to get through this. Imagine, um, you know, mental breaks, anxiety, PTSD, panic attacks, uh, all of these um, spectrum of mental health needs and realities. They're kind of like an invisible hurt. That's how I like to kind of think of them. And when we're in those, we tend to gloss over. We pretend that those mental hurts are just not there. They're not real because nobody sees us walking around with crutches. Nobody sees a brace uh, on our whole leg, you know, so it's not real, which is a societal lie. Those mental disconnects fuel every connection in our body. And there's a lot of uh, biology and science and evidence to that I'm not going to go into today because you can just Google that really quickly and go research quickly. Uh, you come up with 10 different books that you can order or read. Our work today is just to make sure that you understand and entertain the idea 
that you have the right and you have the right just by the very fact that you were born, by the very fact that you were born to this world, you have the right to be aware of when people, places, or things aren't fitting your soul needs. And, and you might be going, well, how would I know that? Well, if you're ever, here's some, here's some good ones. Uh, if you ever cry yourself to sleep and nobody really cares and they're sleeping right next to you, uh, you need to accept that that's not healthy. If somebody is enraged around you and you feel fearful for your existence, your life, if somebody is constantly belittling you, bullying you, treating you as though your existence is a burden. If somebody is stealing from you, if somebody won't have difficult conversations with you, if they are avoiding you, like all of these things, if you are feeling like you are not heard, not seen, if you're feeling invisible, I just want you to sit at the table or at the field of acceptance and kind of look, you know, look around the landscape of the life that you are living or the road that got you to where you are right now. Just say, are there things here that happened to me that I don't like the way they make me interact with the world? And if you are suffering from PTSD or... Uh, severe anxiety or panic or depression. Uh, the list just goes or, 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 and, 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 and. Like, there's just so many manifestations of pain. The way that those manifestations of pain come out of us. I mean, emotional disconnection can cause all kinds of internal problems. It can cause GERD. It can cause IBS. Uh, sexual problems. I mean, on and on and on. We don't have to live in a state of disconnect. We don't. That is not pleasing to ourselves. That is putting other people and uh, other people's ideologies, other people's wants, needs, and desires for you ahead of you. And I'm just asking you to do whatever you have to do to put you in charge of your life. So, thank you guys for joining. Today's coaching session on acceptance. I am incredibly proud of every single one of you for showing up. It is not easy to show up and be self-accountable. And that's really what we are doing here when we work together at infinity within and we look at the infinite possibility of the life you want to live the only thing that is impossible is the things that we haven't tried have a very amazing day i'm just so proud of you for showing up thank you i'll see you guys next time mm-hmm.